Consider a semicircle of radius 1. What is the largest rectangle that can fit inside of this semicircle? Well, what do I mean by largest? If you just think about the widest, then you could say, well, I could go up to something of width 2, up to the width of the diameter. So, so here's one with a width just a little bit below, just a little bit below 2. Or, or you might want to know, what is the tallest rectangle I can fit inside that semicircle? And, and then you can say, well, that would go up into the height or the radius of the semicircle. So we can go right up to height 1. Here's something just below height 1. But what if by largest I mean maximum area? What is the maximum area of a rectangle inscribed in this semicircle of radius 1? Now it's a little bit trickier because there's a, a, a give and a take. If, if I make it a little bit wider, it's going to become shorter. But the area of a rectangle is equal to your width times your height. So your area is a function of both width and height. So which one would be the largest? Which rectangle will give you the maximum area? To think about this, we're going to use calculus. First, let's assign some names. We can think about this semicircle as being centered at the origin, centered at 0, 0. So when I come here to the right, radius 1, I'm now at 1, 0. And if I go here to the top of the semicircle, I'm at 0, 1. So any given rectangle that's laying on the base of the semicircle will hit the semicircle at some point x, y. And then you can see that your width of your rectangle will just be 2 times whatever that x value is. If, if this is x value here, you also have that same distance on the other side. So your width is just 2 times x. And your height is just whatever your y value is. So your height is just y. So your area you can think of as a function of x and y. 2 times x times y. Okay, how are we going to find when it's largest? Well, remember, maximums happen when you have a critical value. That is when your derivative is 0. So our goal should be trying to take a derivative of this function and seeing when it is 0. Because when it's 0, you're either sitting potentially at a maximum or you could be at a minimum and have slope 0. But how are we going to take a derivative of something like this? It's a function of two variables, x and y. So first we need to do something. Before we can get it down into something that we can take a derivative of, we first have to get rid of one of the variables. I need to simplify this so it's just a function of just one variable, say just x, instead of being both a function of x and y. In order to do this, I need to think about how x and y are related to each other. We said x, y could be any point on the semicircle. That's quite a bit of freedom. But there is a restriction. Since it's on the semicircle of radius 1, we know x and y have to be related by the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. I call this the constraint. It's something that limits what my x and my y is. If I didn't have a constraint, if x and y could be anything, then I could make my area as big as I want. I could make x a million and y a million. I could make area as big as I want. But there's something constraining the problem, a constraint. That constraint allows me now to reduce to one variable. Because using the constraint, I can see that my y squared is just 1 minus x squared, and hence my y is just the square root of 1 minus x squared. It could also be the minus square root, but that would be the part of the semicircle that's below the x-axis. And so for us, we're just dealing with when y is the positive square root. We can then take that value for y and plug it into the equation for our area. 
So now area, instead of being 2x times y, is 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Notice this is a function of only one variable. And therefore, since it's a function of one variable, we can now take the derivative of it. The derivative of this area function is equal to, I'll need to use my product rule. Hold the first, 2x, take the derivative of the second. Since it's a square root, it ends up being 1 over 2 times that square root. But then, since I have the by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, so times negative 2x. That was the first half of the product rule. Hold the first, drive the second. Plus, hold the second, drive the first, so just plus 2 square roots of 1 minus x squared. Okay, that's getting a little bit messy, but we can go ahead and clean that up and rewrite it over here. So we have a function for area, and then applying the product rule, we get a function for its derivative. Let's simplify this a little bit. So here we can cancel these twos, and we get a negative 2x squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared. In order to get this also on top of the square root of 1 minus x squared, I need to multiply the top and bottom by that. So that will then give me on top plus 2 times just 1 minus x squared, which then further simplifies to I have a minus 2x squared plus 2 times minus x squared, so minus another 2x squared, so minus 4x squared plus 2, all over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Great. Whatever this function looks like, if I want to find the maximum of this function, I want to know when, when area achieves its maximum, so I want to know when its derivative, this derivative is zero. So what I do now is I set the derivative equal to zero to find my critical values. Setting this equal to zero, I get two equals four x squared. The fraction is zero when the top of it is zero. So the top of it is zero when two is four x squared which gives me that x squared is a half, or in particular, that our x is plus or minus the square root of one half, which is root two over two. Awesome. Let's think about what this tells us. If we go back to our picture of the semicircle, we find that the largest area happens when our x is right here at root 2 over 2, which in fact is the same case as when the x is at minus root 2 over 2. Both giving you the same rectangle, this rectangle right here. We can ask what the corresponding y value is, but we already know that if this is the point x, y, since it's on the unit semicircle, it has to satisfy that x squared plus y squared equals 1. So plugging in root 2 over 2, x squared becomes a half, and you get that y is the same value. So here, if x is plus or minus root 2 over 2, that's also your y. So this solution right here is actually the solution root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. What is the maximum area? The maximum area is when you plug that in, but you end up getting just 2 times your x, so my maximum area comes out to be 2 times root 2 over 2 times 1 minus the root 2 over 2 squared square rooted. That's just your y. Remember, this was just y. So that also just comes out to be root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and you end up with area of 1. So the largest possible area is 1. Well, how do we know that's actually a maximum and not a minimum? All, after all, all we found was this was a critical value. All we did was solve what the derivative was a zero, and so that gave you critical values. So, so you might think that this is actually the smallest rectangle, at least locally the smallest rectangle. And so to verify that it's actually, actually the largest and not the smallest, what you should do is, is you should pick some other value, right? 
you can you can pick some other value. For example, you might come down here and say, well, let's just look let's just look at this other rectangle and compare its area. So this was when x is root two over two. Well, let me come down here to where x x is a little bit larger than that. Maybe maybe when I'm at the point say root three over two and y is one half. And then you can plug that into your expression. Two times root three over two, that gives you square root of three times a half. That gives you your area here is the square root of three divided by two. But notice for this area, root three divided by two is less than one because the square root of three is smaller than two. So when you divide it by two, you get something smaller than one. So, so the blue area, this area of one really is a local maximum. It's, it's the largest possible rectangle that you can inscribe into a semicircle of radius one.